All right, guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So here you guys can see it on the daily, guys. This is XRP, and as you can see, we're stalling out a little bit today, Sunday, November the 17th. If you guys are watching this video on the day that I'm releasing it, uh, it's been pretty much since the U.S. elections that XRP has started to rally and rally significantly. Look at that volume down and around here compared to, uh, you know, compared to what we were seeing before that. I mean, we were getting... Uh, a few bumps over this period of time, but really, guys, volume looking significant. The rest of the crypto space is also uh, rallying. It's rallying, but, you know, all these different altcoins are going to be rallying at different times. This is why we saw, you know, some altcoins rally in the space beforehand. But guys, now it's XRP's time to shine. And as you can see, even within this last hour here, we're seeing uh last couple of hours, we're seeing XRP pump even further. So, um, right now we're talking about an XRP price upwards of a uh, dollar thirteen. Where are we right now? That is fluctuating as I speak. A dollar thirteen for one XRP. Yesterday XRP did go down uh, as low as one dollar. So, <laughs> you know, we were expecting this trajectory to continue upward, but uh, you know, if it was going as low as a dollar yesterday, I will take it. Remember how many days we were just hoping XRP would get over a dollar? And uh, you know, in the comments section of my videos, I'd always hear people say, okay, we're not even over a dollar yet. Uh, now we're basing, we're finding support on the micro time frame at $1 per coin. And uh, as you guys can see, volume is already starting to move for XRP. So we did hit a base down here. Here, let me throw it on the five minute just to show you guys uh, what I'm noticing here on the five minute chart. Now, the reason I go to the five minute is because we do see uh, these trends in a little bit more detail here, uh, as you guys can see. Okay, so let's take this first high down from the low we did retrace at the 702 the trend did come down to that psychological level of one dollar per xrp but guys now we're rebounding ultimately sentiment is positive still so 84 for fear and greed bitcoin dominance is at 59.03 so bitcoin dominance hasn't really moved too much we've got volume uh, overall volume for the crypto sector is down by a little bit 8.66 percent market cap is down by a little bit uh, you can see some of these altcoins have uh, have taken a bit of a hit. Bitcoin's even down by 0.22%. Ethereum down 2.13%. Solana's up though by over 5%. Even XRP in the last 24 hours is still up 4.84%. But now we're starting to see a mix of red and green. And uh, you know, generally speaking, guys, and I have to keep reiterating this, this is what happens. Okay, sentiment here bringing this to our attention. XRP has now broken a three-year high, reaching $1.26. So that was the, uh, I guess I should have said, that was the highest we did see XRP go uh, yesterday, okay, on Saturday. And uh, so it was about $1.26 uh, and a half. But that was the first time since November 11th, 2021, that we've seen that price being broken. So not even November 2020, which would be the equivalent of 2024 in this year's cycle, but November 11th, 2021. This rally has come on the backs of key whale and shark wallets that hold between 1 million and 10 million tokens. So keep that in mind, guys. These are whales. This group has collectively accu uh, accumulated 453.3 million more tokens worth about $526.3 million dollars in this past week alone. So think of where the smart money is going, okay? Meanwhile, the coins that they are accumulating are mainly coming from retail traders attempting to dump their coins on any small XRP rally. So this is the thing, okay? The small pumps, this is where uh, this is where the institutional traders are benefiting from retail traders just uh, kind of getting fed up and having enough of it. Wallets with under 1 million XRP have collectively dumped 75.7 million tokens worth about $87.9 million this past week. Historically, any cryptocurrency tends to see positive market cap growth when its key stakeholders are increasing their holdings and confidence while simultaneously retail FUD fuels this growth even more. Uh, so this has been the exact scenario unfolding for crypto is now six, uh, number six market cap asset. So uh, bringing up the XRP chart here, just demonstrating those metrics. Wallets with less than 1 million XRP dump, 75.7 million XRP. That is the, um, I guess the fuchsia pinky purple color here. And wallets with 1 million to 100 million XRP accumulate uh, that, uh, that, uh, that amount, 453.3 million more XRP. And that is demonstrated by the blue color there. Uh, and then XRP did reach finally a new interyear high, $1.26 and change overall guys this is looking very very positive for xrp let's just take a look at bitcoin real quickly uh bitcoin on the daily and uh throw that on automatic you guys can see bitcoin has uh well it's pretty much just stalled here uh i guess waiting for that next pump 
to the upside to occur. Uh, so something else is weird, though. I guess this does connect. Okay, Bitcoin did not retrace at all uh, while we were seeing this XRP pump. Dom here posting this. There's something weird about this XRP pump. Bitcoin dominance is not tanking. Any other time XRP pumped over 100%, it was when Bitcoin dominance was tanking. So that is something uh, that I think we should pay, uh, be paying attention to. You know, in yesterday's video, I don't know if you guys caught yesterday's video. I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Overall, I was uh, we're all pretty much just talking about the fact that I feel like this XRP pump, uh, it, it just feels different than um, than when we've seen pumps in the past. I, I can't really put my uh, my finger on it, but it does kind of seem a little different. So um, I guess it's not entirely true. Bitcoin's dominance did go down a little bit, but as you guys can see, we're not seeing that huge kind of plummet. I guess I should say this is the Bitcoin dominance chart on the weekly. If I throw it on the hourly, you guys can see we did uh, we did get up into this range here between 62.77% uh, and 60%. So Bitcoin did, uh, it did kind of tap into that range, but now it's just kind of hugging that 60% level. So another interesting metric here from Dom, wanted to thank him for pointing that out. I've posted some things on my personal Facebook too, uh, just to see what my friends would say about Bitcoin. Somebody was uh, complaining that Ethereum wasn't going up. Um, one thing I wanted to bring uh, up about Ethereum and, and the rest of the crypto market, I just wanted to uh, show you guys this, okay? The, the all-time high for Ethereum back in January of 2018 was up in here. I just drew a horizontal line coming through to the next cycle. And as you guys can see right in here, Ethereum did not break its former all-time high until early January 2021. So, um, or actually mid, we'll, we'll call it actually late January, mid to late January 2021. And so something I wanted to mention here, uh, this is generally when the rest of the altcoins tend to pop. If I bring up total three here, let's bring up that uh, that point in time here. So that was in and around here. And uh, what we generally uh, what, what we generally tend to see, okay? So let's take the base from just before that base. And I'm going to um, disregard this because that was the, uh, the beer flu. Let's just take the base and uh, let's take a percentage tool here and if we were to just kind of get a general percentage range 252 percent but then after ethereum hit its all-time high and by the way this is again the total three market cap what did we see we saw well really they, they topped out over here another 655 percent for altcoin so i guess you know one of the other things that we can assume is that ethereum is going to be an important key player when deciding when to cash out guys for more information on what i'm doing and uh, i gotta thank all the new patreon subscribers for subscribing it is only five dollars a month if you guys want to join and see what i'm doing right now uh targets are coming soon you know i'm going to be approaching them uh from many different angles i'm sharing all my crypto moves for this bull run again you can find me at patreon.com slash working money channel and that price five dollars will be going up those who get in at the five dollar price point will be grandfathered in though so you won't be paying more than that uh even if i do raise the prices there's only one tier so i share uh, everything with everybody who has subscribed it's going to be an interesting bull run uh and it's already starting out to be very very interesting i think so i uh, wanted to thank dom arter kerjakulov here posting this interesting to say the least bitstamp literally has just rug pulled the xrp community what does he mean by this? So Ripple owns equity share in Bitstamp. Bitstamp has withdrawn more than 90% of liquidity from USD XRP and BTC XRP AMM pools. This means that now trading of these assets becomes extremely volatile with a huge price impact. I highly discourage anyone owning or even trading Bitstamp issued assets. Um, so again, guys, be careful what you're trading here. Um, these are just uh, just some screen grabs from the, uh, from the Bitstamp exchange. He goes on to say this is in addition that uh, there is zero guarantee that Bitstamp will honor the one-to-one -one conversion of these wrapped assets. How can anyone trust DeFi on the XRPL when official partners make such moves? The optics here are terrible. I personally like to just keep it simple. Again, I'm sharing uh, everything that I'm doing over there at patreon.com slash working money channel. I don't get into you know, these kinds of fancy finangled ways to, to trade and do, do these kinds of things. Um, I like to keep it simple. I'm from the old school. I came from trading stocks. I've been doing that since 2011. So, uh, and I've, and I've learned a lot along the way. Anyway, guys, be mindful of where you're putting your cryptocurrency on top of which, if you guys are signed up with the Binance exchange, maybe you have been experiencing this as well. Ido Farina did originally post this Binance suspends XRP withdrawals. Have you guys, uh, are, are you guys privy to this? Did this happen to you? Apparently uh, Binance is saying, no, you cannot withdraw your XRP. Uh, keep your crypto safe, guys. Keep it on a cold wallet storage solution. I personally use the Ledger Nano. 
Um, I've never had a problem with the Ledger Nano at this point in time, though. I mean, we're getting pretty close to be uh, to, to start putting crypto back onto the exchanges and selling off. But anyway, just as reference, if you do want a Ledger Nano somewhere safe to keep your cryptocurrency, I do have an affiliate link in the description of every video I do. You can use it if you want. You do not have to use it. Uh, but I do suggest you find some kind of mechanism. And I like the Ledger Nano because it does have... Um, it is like a physical mechanism where you do have to actually author the transactions yourself. Keep your crypto safe, guys. Not your keys, not your crypto. Uh, nevertheless, wanted to thank Ido Farina and Zach Rector just for bringing that to our attention. Now, looks like Arthur Brito is moving large sums of XRP. I saw this originally from uh, from the Whale Alert, and they, were, uh, they, they did not know where this XRP was coming from, but apparently this is Arthur Brito's account. Uh, if Vet's calculations are correct, he says, looks like Arthur Brito, if the labeling is correct, is transferring XRP to a hot wallet. 80 million XRP and then 10 million XRP went to Bitstamp. So um, <laughs> this is the Arthur Brito wallet and he's uh, scaling out 80 million XRP. I mean, you got to imagine how much this guy does have uh, considering he's one of the, uh, well, the original creators of XRP. I mean, these guys are realizing, right, the pump is here and uh, they do not, they're also, you know, of the opinion that they do not want to squander this opportunity. So uh, there you go. Ripple partners are even coming out suggesting that uh, a public offering of the Ripple company is coming very, very soon, as soon as possible. Uh, according to Yoshitaka Katao, guys, this one courtesy of Michael Branch here, right down here in a social media post on X, SBI Holdings CEO Yoshitaka Katao stated that Ripple, one of the leading enterprise blockchain companies, should start preparing for an initial pri uh, public offering. So he is suggesting they should be doing this as soon as possible after the SEC matter gets resolved. Now, I'm assuming they're probably already that 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 is probably already in the works. Uh, but he's making this uh, an official public statement here. In early October, the SEC filed a notice of appeal in the Ripple case, extending its prolonged legal battle with the company. However, likely uh, the regulatory cloud will no longer be hanging over Ripple. Various legal analysts predict that the appeal will be shelved by the SEC following the seemingly imminent changing of the guard at the agency. Naturally, there is already some chatter about whether or not Ripple could go public in the near future. But uh, apparently, Yoshi. Taka Gatao has come out saying just this. This one, uh, this is a tweet courtesy of Bank XRP, SBI Japan CEO. Ripple should begin preparing for its IPO as soon as possible once the SEC matter is resolved. So there is the tweet there just from, uh, well, just from yesterday, Saturday, November the 16th. Guy doesn't sleep. Um, understand, Mr. Yoshitaka Katao and his shareholders are excited for a Ripple IPO because the liquidity created through the public market allows them to pay off their investment. This coming from Sento Sumo Saba here. Uh, after the current lawsuit, Ripple will go public. The current CEO wants to do this. Chris wants to do this uh, and added that the IPO would pay off the investment. I don't know if you guys remember from back in uh, 2021. Chris Garling, or Chris Garling, Chris Larson wants to do this. Ripple uh, plans IPO after settlement with the SEC. So essentially, they were. They this has been in talk since uh, since April twenty one, uh, and this was like six months into the lawsuit. Maybe maybe less than that. December, January, February, March, April, four months, four months into the lawsuit. Um, and I guess they never thought that it would be going this long, that it would be prolonged, and that we would uh, you know have to be going through all this. Fast forward, um, you know, four years after the lawsuit, and here we are today. Uh, but Yoshitaka Katao insisting that this is, uh, well, hopefully going to go, or he's at least encouraging them to move quickly. Uh, we have been invested in fintech companies, um, and we adopt that technology in our group. And, and also, we spread the technology across the industry. That is SBI Group's basic strategy. Crypto Eddie posts more resources down here, like uh, the full interview with Yoshitaka Katao, where he's, uh, he's sitting on a panel. I will link this in the description of the video if you guys are interested to watch that. So Katow here is saying, you know, um, and, and Larson was even saying back in 2021 that uh, the lawsuit has to be complete and finalized before Ripple can finally IPO. Um, you know, it's going to be, yeah, I mean, if XRP has clarity, great. But I think the sentiment and the optics over there at the SEC are also going to play a big role. Michael Branch here posting this, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. SEC Chair Gary Gensler reported to be stepping down after Thanksgiving. Is that a week away now? A week or two weeks away? SEC Chair Gensler is expected to step down voluntarily after Thanksgiving and depart in early January ahead of Trump's inauguration, according to Fox Business producer Eleanor Turret. So this is uh, the latest news here. While Trump's choice for the next SEC chair remains undetermined, several candidates 
are under consideration, and uh, we've talked a little bit about that. Uh, other potential candidates include Brad Bondi, uh, a lawyer at Paul Hast, uh, Hast, uh, Hastings, and Paul Atkins of Wilkie Farr. Both are known for favoring less stringent regulatory approaches to crypto assets. Uh, Atkins currently serves on the board of the Digital Chamber, which would be great, uh, and co-chairs Token Alliance, which he provides guidance on token issue and development. Uh, former CFTC chair Christopher Giancarlo has dismissed speculation about his potential nomination for the position, so he's not going to do it. But, you know, if this clown does step down by Thanksgiving, well, wouldn't that just be great for everybody? And, uh, you know, maybe we would see the IPO. Uh, well, no, we probably won't. I think the lawsuit has to be done first. That has to be fully cleared before we do finally see a Ripple IPO. But, you know, as XRP is pumping, a Ripple IPO certainly does make sense. That would certainly get the, the price of the coin even higher. Um, but it's going to be a timing thing, guys. It's It's really, at the end of the day, going to be a timing thing. Anders here giving his two cents on the Gary Gensler situation. Why does it seem uh, XRP has the strongest reaction to Gary Gensler likely resigning soon? In my opinion, it's because the markets know Gary Gensler was behind the attack on Ripple and XRP, specifically targeting them. In April 2018, Gensler publicly called XRP a likely non-compliant security uh, while he was teaching at MIT. And long before he became SEC chairman, the day before the Ripple lawsuit, um, uh, sorry, in, uh, around Christmas 2020, Gary Gensler met with Jay Clayton. There's no coincidence there. Jay Clayton and Bill Hinman resigned the day of the lawsuit. XRP price crashed, but it later started to rise and XRP went on a run. A couple of days before Gensler was sworn in at the next SEC chairman in April of 21, XRP price topped at around $1.90. After uh, several months of positive price action, a level we have not seen, XRP price instead started a decline, so we did not see it continue. Uh, a few days ago, though, Gensler held a speech where people speculated he will resign soon. XRP started a massive bull run, leading the market. When Gensler finally resigns, though, we're likely to see this trend continue for XRP, in my opinion. He says, not financial advice. Uh, the expectation is that Trump will recommend a pro-crypto SEC chairman and the SEC in the Ripple case, along with a long list of other crypto cases, are expected to be settled or dismissed. So uh, some great insight here from Anders, I think, with regards to, uh, well, with regards to this story, you know, 2025, guys, is shaping up to look very, very promising for, uh, well, not just the crypto industry, but for XRP, especially if we get that real world utility. Listen to what Matt Hoogan had to say on Tony Edwards' podcast. Bitwise CIO Matt Hoogan gives his prediction on XRP. And guys, he thinks 2025 is also going to be very promising for our cryptocurrency. Listen to this. So Matt, there's a whole army that wants me to ask you about the XRP spot ETF you guys filed even before the election, which uh, was amazing. Why did you guys decide to do it and the timing and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's first talk about the asset before I talk about the filing. You know, XRP is an asset that has sustained and proven itself over a long period of time. It has a very strong community and very strong technology underneath. From my point of view, we haven't seen what it can do because the company Ripple has been engaged in this difficult lawsuit with the SEC which is sort of like trying to operate with two arms tied behind your back. Mm. I think if we fast forward a year into the future, if we get positive developments in that space, you'll see XRP unleashed. What can it do in the market? It's proven its technology. It has a unique approach to the market. It has a strong community behind it. It has liquidity. It has interest from traditional Wall Street firms. We saw that with SockGen, you know, expanding their stable coin onto, uh, onto the ledger uh, earlier this week. I think it's a really interesting idea. Like, what can this asset do if it is unleashed? So that's sort of the investment thesis without going too deep into the ways it's sort of iterating and developing. And then, you know, from a, from a filing perspective, again, constrained with what I can say, but I've said this before every time we file, which is that Bitwise doesn't file for fun. Mm. We file because we think there is a pathway to launch a product. We're not always right. We filed for a Bitcoin ETF for five years before we eventually got there. So, um, so take that with that grain of salt. But the reason we filed is because we thought there was a pathway to get it launched. Otherwise, we wouldn't have filed. And we're excited to continue to pursue that in 2025, particularly with the new administration. So firstly, Matt Hoogan saying here that, uh, you know, 
they don't do things just at random. Bitwise chooses because they do see a path for a product to sell. And uh, XRP, I mean, his thesis is, the investment thesis is, it's a robust cryptocurrency with a lot of interest surrounding it. That may not have been the case five, six, seven years ago, uh, but institutional investors were not interested in cryptocurrencies at that time. Now that they are, XRP and other utility coins obviously uh, do have their attention, but XRP specifically, because it's got the visibility, because it's got the partnerships and real world utility, Matt Hoogan is essentially saying, yeah, that's the one. And he says, fast forward a year in the future and you will see XRP unleashed so a dollar 12 right now as of the time of this recording and again this is on the hourly i think this is just the beginning over a dollar will we see xrp under a dollar again i don't know i guess i'll have to come back at the bottom of the market and check for now though i think we should be getting very excited about what is coming next and again for more information if you guys are interested in what i'm doing you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel i'm not bending anybody's arm do it if you want you don't have to do it but prices will be going up it is only five dollars a month for those of you guys who are interested who may have been uh, on the fence uh so check it out guys patreon.com slash working money channel for all my crypto moves that's just my opinion but i I want to hear what you guys think please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already like the video if you like the content i'm providing i always love hearing your comments see you in the next one guys